Hello, I'm Atuba George. Thank God for an opportunity to bring God's truth to you. Now, let's just go quick into 1 Corinthians. We are in chapter 3. Praise God, Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We receive our daily bread today. Thank you for wisdom, revelation that is poured out from your spirit into our lives. The heavens are opened over us right now. And we receive every thought of God in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Now we're in verse 8. It says, Now he that planted and he that watered are one. And every man shall receive his own reward, excuse me, according to his own labor. For we are laborers together with God. You are God's husbandry. You are God's building. Praise God. Notice it says, we are laborers together with God. So we do our part and God does his part. Praise God. And then he says, you are God's husbandry. So God is laboring in you. Let's go. On. Now verse 10, it says, According to the grace of God which is given unto me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation and another builded thereon. But let every man take heed how he builded thereon. For other foundation can no man lay than that, which, than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. What is the foundation of your belief? Now, there, now there are many churches that have um, uh, what, they, what you call foundational classes or foundational teachings. Um, they, they, so when you get born again or when, 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 when you're new in the faith, they take you through those um, classes. Now, it's amazing that people still don't understand this. The foundation of your belief is Jesus Christ. Now, when you say it's Jesus Christ, what does that mean? It is hearing the voice of Jesus Christ. If you've been a Christian for no matter how long, and you cannot beat your chest to say that you hear the voice of God, listen to me. This may be hard. You have no foundation. <clears throat> because now, you have no basis of judgment. See? Now, when I say hearing the voice of God, don't get carried away that I'm think, you're thinking I'm saying, you know, you say, my son, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. No. The Spirit of God, and, and here's the witness that the Spirit of God is in you. See, if you're born again, it means you have received the Spirit of God. You cannot be born again without the Spirit of God. You know, people get this thing wrong. Now, you, are, you need to give your life to Christ. Okay, say after me. Say after you. And then, Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father, I receive Jesus. I receive Jesus. I confess him as Lord. I confess in Jesus' name. Now you are saved. Now that you are saved, the next thing you need to do is to receive the Holy Ghost. How did he get saved without receiving the Holy Ghost? Praise God. No, it doesn't work that way. But you know what? Someone created that idea. Someone just put that stuff there and it is it is it has become a wedge to me so it's like, i know i'm saved though but i've not received the holy ghost yet if you have not received the holy ghost brothers and sisters you are not saved yet now now salvation is when the holy ghost comes to reside inside of you isn't that what paul said if any man be in christ he is a new creature what makes him a new creature the holy ghost so what the holy ghost came to make you born again and then he now stepped aside. I'm waiting for you to say, Lord, I want to receive the Holy Ghost. I want to receive the Holy Ghost. And that, that's another problem. So many people have the Holy Ghost in them already. They don't even know because they were not taught right. See, I was like that for many years. Many, many years. I remember one time, you know, as a, as a little boy, <clears throat> I got, I got my, my, you know, the little children in my neighborhood and then we just told ourselves that day that you know what we're going to pray today like we used to see you know my parents pray everybody around me knew that my dad was a prayer you know when my dad is praying here you know, the neighbors will know that something is going on you know so we gathered ourselves together then we began to pray and something happened that day that nobody can explain today i know it was the holy ghost that visited that place it started out like a joke but something happened that made every one of us run away, <laughs> praise God. It's it, it just an experience that we couldn't explain. 
But I knew that day I began to speak in other tongues. But then, I had no one to talk to about it. And so, continued living my life. I didn't speak in other tongues again. Until later on in my life, actually when I got into the university. <clears throat> and I began to fellowship with believers now that, that, that put premium in speaking in tongues. And then I said, I know this thing happened to me when, when you know, and then said, ah, you, we, we need to, I didn't have to get born again, again, and then receive, no. I just got in the midst of the believers, and, and while we fellowship together, and I said, you know what, I, I want to begin to speak in other tongues. And it didn't take me time. It, it was just like the Holy Ghost just unlocked something inside of me, and, and it just began to flow. Praise God. Why? Because he was already in me. So there was no process. There was no you need to go through all these classes first. And then when you have finished this class, then the last class is the impartation of the Holy Ghost. No, you don't need any man to impart the Holy Ghost to you. You don't. We do it. You see, we may do it. But you don't have to wait for anyone to come and lay hands on you. Praise God. <laughs> Wherever you are, even right now, you can just lift up your hands and say, Holy Spirit, you know what? I know you're here. I want to speak in other tongues right now. Why is it important that you speak in tongues? It is easier for people who speak in other tongues by the Holy Ghost to hear the voice of God. I'll explain that to you. Because when you speak in tongues, you are actually demonstrating faith already in the utterance that you are receiving. Now I'm not talking about you trying to copy someone else, you know, you know, ah, okay, I want to speak in tongues. I know the way, when, when people speak in tongues, they used to say, sherima, 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 or they used to say, rabba, ba, 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 rabba, ba. so, okay, it's time to receive the Holy Ghost. Oh, rabba, ba, 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 and you know in your mind you're speaking what someone else is speaking. You are not speaking in tongues, you're just mimicking someone. When the Holy Ghost comes, you will know in your heart that what you are saying is being given to you by the Spirit of God. You will know because you will see. Listen, there is nobody that can explain this thing to you. <laughs> what well, well, I mean, the feeling of it. You yourself will bear witness that something is taking place in your heart. You will know the words are just coming freely. And you, you will hear the sound of it. And you're like, wow, this is so sweet. I love the way this thing is going. Praise God. And, and, and the more you're thinking about it, the more it's just pouring out. It's just, you don't want to stop. You just have kabo shali. You know, sometimes we speak and we begin to speak. I, I experience that a lot. I'm just praying and praying. And suddenly, I know, I know I'm speaking different languages. Praise God. I know, I know. And the funny thing, I remember one day I was praying. I was just praying alone in a field somewhere. You know, there are times you just want to go out of the house. Because you, you want to express yourself before the Lord. And you don't want anybody. To, you don't even want to think that somebody is, is being disturbed right now. So you go to an open field somewhere far away you know you just want to pray praise god and i remember praying and praying and praying and praying and, and suddenly I, I i felt the utterance that were coming out this has happened several i felt the utterance that that's coming out it's some chinese and the funny thing about it is i saw myself behaving having an attitude like a Chinese person praise god and I'm like, what's going on here praise and, and in a moment it changed to some other language. It, I was just going from one language to... It was sweet. <laughs> and you know you're not making this up. You are enjoying the experience. You are asking yourself, boy, what's going on? I love this. Now, when, when that is already happening in your life, it is so easy then for the Holy Spirit to begin to speak to you because He is already speaking to you and you're already responding to His word. Only that it is coming in other tongues right now. Now, it's the same way it will come in English. And you're just sitting down and doing something and say, I, I want you to get up and go to Susan so place now. See? So people who speak in tongues often hear the Holy Spirit more frequently. That's just the truth. And that's why we always recommend at least do this. Pray in tongues for at least an hour every day. While you are speaking in tongues, 
words and utterance, understanding, thoughts will begin to well up in your mind that you know you are not the making of these thoughts. You know. How do you know you're not the one making them up? Because the thoughts will bring knowledge to you. You know, you may be praying about something. You may be praying for someone. And then suddenly you're praying in tongues concerning the person. And then suddenly you, you begin to let me put it this way you begin to have an experience of knowledge you begin to you begin to it begins to come into your heart you see that person this is what he has done this is what he has done this is what he has done and then you you're like oh is that why this person is behaving like this wow now nobody told you that now what's going on the spirit of god is speaking to you so he said all right lord what would you have me do? Should I talk to the person about it? And you feel that urge in your heart to talk to the person about it. And then you say, okay, thank you, Lord. I, I'll obey you. And then you finish praying. And then you make a call. Or you go visit that person. Say, oh, how are you doing? Say, I'm fine. Are you sure you're fine? Yeah. What about this and this? And, and the person looks at them. How did you know that? You know, you know sometimes people scare people. <laughs> you're just talking, hey, what about this? He's wondering, who have you been talking to? God. <laughs> Praise God. No, 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 seriously. Who have you been talking to? God. I was praying for you yesterday, and this is what came to my spirit. So what's going on? Can we talk about it? And you know, some people can still be stubborn, even with that. I remember an experience I had. I was still a little boy. I had followed my dad to, to, to visit a family. And my dad just said, come, let's go visit this family. And then we got there, and then my dad was talking to the man. <clears throat> and then my dad said, look, um, how are things with you? And I said, yeah, fine, fine. So my dad said, look, I was praying, and I was not even praying for you. I was just praying, and, and the Lord said, I should come see you, and I should ask you this question. So let's talk about it. And the man, you know, no, no, no everything, everything is fine, everything is fine, everything is fine. So, my dad, he told me later, he didn't get any further utterance. So I said, okay, well, let's just pray. And then they prayed. <clears throat> now, a few weeks after that, the man had an issue. And he was, he was sacked from his place. Of, he had a very good job. He was sacked from his place. Of, not just sacked, he was disgraced out of his job. Now, someone came to tell my dad, oh, did you hear what happened to this person? He said, no, he's not here. Oh, this is what happened. This is what... And I said, what? Really? And then guess what the person said? And the person said, and he said that you came to his house, but he refused to tell you the truth about what was going on. Now you see, the Lord came to save him because someone was praying. Now this is what believers are supposed to be doing now. We pray, we receive words from the Spirit of God, and we go minister to one another. This is how prosperity will come to the body of Christ. This is how blessing comes to the body of Christ. You're praying, and then the Lord said, Hey, I want you to send so and so amount to Susan so person. Now that happens to us a lot of times. And we, we just call and say, Oh, how are you doing? Can you please send me your account number? And guess what? The, the same thing happens to us. Praise God. You know, that's how our needs get met. Because we sow the same thing. We stay before the Lord and we pray. And then He begins to give us instructions concerning people. Sometimes the Lord says, Oh, send your tithe to Susan so person. You know, I had a cousin share with me. She said, Look, the Lord told her to send her tithe to a Muslim. And she struggled. We said, how, how, Lord, how? No, but she knew she had heard the voice of God. And she decided to be. And said, oh, okay, you know what? Send me a account number. Let me send you some money. And then she did. And then the person calls back and said, and person began to share the, what she's been going through. Now, what was going on there? God was showing himself as her father. And I said to her, do you know what? That lady may be a Muslim, but she's a seed of God. So what? It's time to reap her in to the kingdom of God. God has stretched out his hands to her. It's time for her harvest. Praise mm. God. That is who God is. If we practice this, see, the foundation is what? Jesus Christ. Do you hear Jesus Christ speak to you? If you don't, 
That's all I've been explaining. So what do you do now? Put it to action. It's time to get to the foundation and begin to hear the voice of God. Praise God. I'll see you tomorrow. God bless you. Bye-bye.